Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q2 and H1 FY21 earnings conference call of Grassim Industries Limited. We have with us today from the management, Mr. Dilip Gaur, Managing Director, Mr. Kalyan Ram, CEO, Global Chemicals and Group Business Head, Fertilizers and Insulators, Mr. Jayan Dua, Chief Executive Officer, Chemical Division, Mr. Ashish Adukya, CFO. As a reminder, all participants' lines will be in listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during a conference call, please signal an operator by pressing start and zero on your touchdown phone. Please note this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Ashish Adukya, CFO. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon to all the participants. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased to mention that we've had a good start to this Diwali week with some uh, few positive news. Uh, we've announced uh, two important transactions uh, over the last few weeks, uh, which is in line with our strategic objectives uh, of one, enhancing focus on core business, and two, increased presence in chlorine derivatives, improving our VAT contribution. In, in addition to both these announcements, our financial performance for Q2 witnessed a reversion to normalize, normalization from the sequential quarter. So let us, let us start and dwell into the fertilizer transaction first. Uh, I think we've got a couple of slides in the presentation as well. It's probably slide 11 and 12. The board of directors of the company uh, have approved the divestment of fertilizer business to uh, Indian subsidiary of Indorama Corporation. Uh, Indogulf is one of the largest uh, urea producer in India with a capacity of 1.2 million ton per annum. It is also one of the uh, most efficient uh, uh, energy and efficient plant uh, in the country. We have a strong distribution network spanning across northern and eastern India, and it, is, uh, it has a well-known brand called Shakti Mar. The decision to divest the fertilizer business is a strategic uh, portfolio choice. Given the depth and scale of uh, Grassin's core businesses, like fiber and uh, chemicals and textiles, uh, there was a limited strategic rationale to stay invested in a non-core business. We ideally uh, like to maintain exposure in businesses that are leading position in addressable market or that have strong growth potential. In addition, payment cycle for large receivable in case of uh, fertilizer are long, which leads to uh, low return on capital employed. Uh, Grassim will utilize the funds to evaluate growth opportunities in existing businesses of viscose and chemicals and textiles. Uh, the business will be transferred to the buyer for a cash consideration of rupees 2,649 crore. Uh, this, this, is, this is basically the enterprise value. This consideration reflects the strength and future potential of the fertilizer business. This value has been arrived at on the basis of working capital as on June 30th, 2020. The, uh, broadly, sub, you know, subject to other conditions, if the working capital changes at closing, which is expected to be in, in you know, uh, nine to 12 months time frame, the value will be adjusted to that extent. So, the, the, the second transaction, you know, is, is, is the one that we announced a fortnight back, which was a collaboration with uh, Lubrizol. Uh, this collaboration is part of our long-term direction to bring in world-class technologies to India and additionally complements our growth strategy of improving our chlorine integration. Lubrizol is a market leader in CPVC globally and in India. Lubrizol would, uh, uh, would set up uh, a state-of-the-art CPVC plant at Vilayat, 
uh, of approximately uh, 100 KTPA capacity in two equal phases, along with the zero liquid discharge system. Grassim will provide land, utilities, and materials, primarily chlorine and hydrogen, to this plant. Grassim will operate and manage the plant operations for, a, for an annual commercial consideration. We expect the plant to be commissioned in uh, second half of FY23. While uh, Lubrizol brings capital and technology, Grassim brings extensive manufacturing expertise. CV, CPVC present will be transferred to Lubrizol on an exclusive basis. Post commissioning of both phases, we expect our chlorine integration on overall basis to improve by around 5%. Overall VAT EBITDA per ton of chlorine is also likely to improve uh, given this transaction. Uh, now coming to results with the bounce back in September quarter and some revival in the business sentiments, the board uh, of directors has uh, taken decision to continue with the chemicals project at Vilayat, Rahela, and Balbatsupuram, with the commissioning ranging from quarter four FI21 to quarter one FI22. Therefore, we have revised our capex spend to rupees 1,852 crore from rupees 1,615 crore that we had uh, announced in the previous quarter. The capex spend uh, amount uh, stood at uh, 279 crore in half one of FI21, and the balance will be spent in FI20 uh, in the second half of FI20. On results, uh, our uh, financial performance witnessed a strong rebound in uh, September 20 quarter, making us confident that the improvement in business fundamentals is here to stay. The capacity utilization of VSF business improved from 26% in June quarter to 88% in uh, September quarter. Some of these figures are already there in the presentation, the initial slides. The capacity utilization of our caustic soda plant improved from 49% levels in uh, June quarter to 80% levels in September quarter. The consolidated revenue and EBITDA for the quarter stood at 18,394 crore and 3,660 crore for quarter two, reporting a significant improvement both on quarter on quarter basis as well as on YOY basis. On a standalone basis, revenue improved to 3,438 crore from 1,940 crore in Q1. Uh, EBITDA also improved significantly to 680 crore in quarter two uh, from negative uh, 46 crore that we saw in quarter one. The sequential deleveraging in consolidated as well as standalone net debt, uh, net debt has been on account of a reduction in working capital and improvement in EBITDA. Our consolidated net debt stood at 17,295 crore and standalone net debt stood at 2,329 crore in quarter two. The net debt to EBITDA stood at a very healthy level of 1.46 times during the quarter on standalone basis. VSF demand uh, witnessed a strong recovery in domestic and overseas market. The demand for gray fiber remained strong with supply falling short of demand. The share of domestic VSF sales have touched the pre-COVID levels. Uh, on page 16, uh, the domestic uh, VSF realization witnessed a sharp reversal from start with uh, demand revival in uh, China. The VSF uh, plant inventory in, uh, in China uh, fell to 16 days in September from the highs of uh, 45 days in April. 
The capacity utilization for Chinese uh, VSS plant improved to mid 70s in September from uh, around mid, mid 60s in April. The VFY capacity utilization averaged around 46% uh, for quarter two from the low double digit uh, number in quarter one with some demand revival from tex textiles hubs in India. The VFY business generated a revenue of 228 crore and EBITDA of 14 crore in quarter two out of the viscose total EBITDA that you see on this, uh, in the presentation. The fixed cost savings in viscose has uh, sustained. The fixed cost uh, optimization uh, uh, measures uh, uh, led to savings of almost uh, uh, 116 crore in quarter two in comparison to average uh, uh, FY20 cost. Caustic soda operational performance was better in quarter two. The financial performance was driven by better utilization levels, easing of input costs, and strong, strong VAT performance. However, in realization front, uh, overseas markets have been overwhelmed by excess uh, caustic uh, supply driven by chlorine demand in PVC and other de derivatives. Caustic soda price CFR in Asia uh, dipped uh, below $250 level with domestic prices mirroring the weakness. The chemicals business reported an EBITDA of uh, 187 crore in quarter two a significant increase from previous quarter. The caustic soda demand picked up on, on account of uh, uh, pickup in demand in textiles and paper, paper segment. Uh, the chlorine value added product uh, demand remained up, upbeat uh, during the quarter, driven by demand from health and hygiene, uh, drink water and other industrial segments with EBITDA witnessing a double-digit uh, sequential growth. The chlorine realization remained positive during quarter uh, two and cushioned the fall in the eco realization on back of easing caustic prices. On page 22, fertilizer business reported an uh, EBITDA of rupees 60 crore, driven by lower fixed cost and better pura which is non-urea sales. Purak business contributed around 32% of overall uh, fertilizer EBITDA in the quarter. Uh, on, on efforts on the sustainability front, fronts are actually paying off. Grasim was ranked ninth in the list of ET Futurescape's seventh responsible business ranking on sustainability and CSR. In a very significant outcome in uh, sustainability, VSF business received the number one ranking and has been accorded with dark green shirt in Canopy's uh, uh, hot button report 2020. Our inherent uh, financial strength, our operational excellence and diverse product portfolio with cement, financial services, viscose and chemicals, uh, we are well poised to sustain leadership across our businesses with rebound in the economic activity. I would now like to hand over to the operator for Q&A, and we've got to Dilip, Kalyan, Chayant, and others in the call to answer your questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. To ask a question, please press star followed by one on your touchdown phone now. We have a first question from the line of Sumangal Nivadya from Kotak Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, and thanks for the uh, opportunity. Uh, congratulations on, on a good recovery and also the divestment. Uh, first question is on the divestment. 
I think uh, it's fair to say that from time to time, based on our strategic plans, we will evaluate both, you know, purchasing and sale of businesses. So currently, for insulator, there is no such plan. Understand. Uh, uh, Ashish, with respect to Rizal, uh, is it possible to share some more color? Because it looks like we, it's more a transaction uh, where we are locking in uh, customers for long term. Because in the plant you shared that we are not going to invest anything uh, from the glassing book. So is it possible to share how exactly will we benefit uh, in terms of some financial aspects? Yeah. So let me give you a brief uh, overview again, which I've kind of covered in the speech. But uh, uh, for the sake of repetition, it's important that I clarify this point. And then I will request Kalyan to add anything if uh, required. So, uh, see, our, our whole objective is that uh, a chlorine should not become a bottleneck for uh, overall uh, caustic business. So, the evacuation of chlorine is extremely important. And B, in, you know, we need to make sure that uh, while the objective of chlorine evacuation is met, at the same time, we make money out of the chlorine derivatives that uh, either we produce on our own or uh, we produce along with a partner. So we make adequate uh, return on the chlorine that we are trying to uh, uh, evacuate through uh, chlorine derivatives. So with that uh, objective, uh, we, we had a discussion with uh, Lucrisol, who is a leader in CPVC, and uh, Within the premise of Vilayat, uh, uh, okay, we will uh, set up a facility, the capex of which will be met by Lubrisol, and through the pipeline, we can supply chlorine to this facility, and we, we will also be able to supply uh, hydrogen to this facility, which is also a requirement. And uh, uh, we will run the plant. Uh, for, uh, and, and, and we will basically earn a fixed uh, annual uh, uh, compensation for running the plant and the cost will be uh, passed through. So that's the broad economics uh, on, on the basis of which, which it will work. Uh, you know, it will be included in the financials of uh, the cost of chemical specific uh, appropriately as per the accounting standards. Uh, Kalyan, is that is there something that you would like to add? Yeah, so um, James will add a bit more. Uh, all I can say in terms of our overall uh, uh, chloralkali strategy, um, globally it's always chlorine driven and caustic is more like a byproduct and in India it has been so far uh, very caustic driven and chlorine was there to evacuate. But at some stage, we believe that uh, India will also be something very similar to international uh, way of chlorine driving or chlor driving with caustic. And hence, we had very clear strategy of uh, in segmenting chlorine uh, movement into three parts. Mm -hmm. One is our own derivatives production. Second is to uh, have enough pipeline customers so that the tunnels won't move. And three is bring alliances in technologies or to enable that there is a lot of, uh, you know, we, we cater to avoid import substitution. So we, that would help uh, substitute imports. So those were the three we were looking at, and this is part of that alliance. Um, Jen, you, you want to add a, a bit more? No, I think I think Kalyan, it's all covered. Uh, the only thing which I would probably re-emphasize is that one of our objectives is over time to get a much larger chlorine integration, uh, so that uh, particularly in India, we will see that both caustic and chlorine will run together, 
and you produce literally 0.9 for every ton of cost you produce. Mm -hmm. So we have to look at as co-products and plan accordingly. And the way you describe the three of them, I think this is the first step on the collaboration one. Understood. Uh, thanks for the elaborate answers. I have a few questions more, but I'll get back in the queue. Thanks and all the best. Thank you, sir. We have next question from the line of Gunjan Prithiani from JP Morgan. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for taking my questions uh, and congratulations on the divestment. Clearly, this is something which we have been looking forward to. So, come clearly as a pleasant surprise. Um, on the uh, core business, um, now VSF, uh, I mean, there's a significant shift in the commentary that I'm reading from what you know you said in the uh, introductory uh, comments and even what uh, lensing seems to be suggesting. So is it fair to say that uh, from a cycle perspective, you're feeling much better now and directionally we should continue to see the pricing improvement sustain? Or this is like, you know, you're coming after, uh, you know, the recovery in uh, in China is coming after a gap. So there is an inventory reduction which happened from 45 days to 15 days and hence the pricing move is more shortage led. And when the production normalizes, you may see the you know prices going side sideways. You, if you can share how you're feeling about the cycle on the VSF. Good, then, uh, the the good, good thing about this recovery is, while the inventory has come down, the the OR has gone up. So the, the plant capacity utilization has gone up. So it, it, that itself tells you that there is a healthy demand. So it is basically a demand driven recovery. It is not a supply side recovery. So. So the, the China OI was around 60, 67% has gone to almost 80%. And despite that, the inventory has come down from 46, 45 days to now 12 days as we speak. And every day it is kind of unfolding there. So I think it's not a flash in the pan. And why I, why we are saying it is a uh, it is a structural uh, recovery? Two things. The, the cotton viscose uh, delta which I spoke to last time became even higher because I think uh, what the world was expecting that the cotton prices may go down. But the cotton production has been little less in US. And China is again buying a lot of uh, cotton. A lot of speculative activity has come into cotton for, for various reasons. So after the, while the season has started, the cost cotton prices are going up, has gone, uh, going down, have gone up by almost 2000 RMB. So the difference between cotton and viscose became more than 4000 RMB per ton. So that is something an all-time high. And whenever that happens, the shift from cotton to viscose starts. So what we have we understand is that a lot of cotton spinning uh, spindles are converted to viscose. So that has led to this demand uh, surge. India also same thing is happening. India will be exporting one of the largest volumes of cotton this year. They might do a million ton of cotton export. And the NSP also government is enforcing to make sure that they get better realization. So cotton prices in India also are likely to hold. And they were of the because of late rain, and some cotton crop damage has been reported from Gujarat and uh, other places. So we believe that yes, uh, there is a uh, on the ground there is a shift because of the you know, interfiber dynamics. The second big driver has been China and domestic demand. Good thing about this whole recovery has come because of Chinese domestic demand recovery, not the export recovery. The China exports are still low. So to my mind, that makes me feel that the China might sustain because the government is very keen to make sure that the, and the domestic demand sustains. The derailer could be if the second round of COVID happens in Europe and US and the export demand gets impacted. So the, in India, a recovery happened on the two grounds. The domestic demand, where this may continue. And I think the government is doing the right thing. And the textile has also come under the 10 champion sector. So I think Indian demand should sustain. But the export demand might get impacted if the COVID catches on. That's the only thing which I can think about. So we believe at least for next couple of months, things should sustain. And then the next discontinuity will come in Jan Feb. Then we know how the COVID is uh, taking shape, how the vaccine is developing, what happens then after the new year. So we'll have to look at that. That's the test of the look at. 
and there is no worry on the uh, supply side right i mean on no, the there, there, there is enough enough capacity in india we have test for no, not from the capacity uh, from um, i meant from the uh, from the additions perspective because that's intermittently an issue that you see chinese adding so is there any big capacity no, which no, is in no, the pipeline no 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 right now there is no big capacity now the best at best is the biggest one is the pipeline our, our capacity so that will be only india for india so that is not going to impact the world as much as we think about it otherwise there is a very minor 3 400000 tons of capacity into during the year actually so, okay yeah. got it and uh, uh, the second question would be on the caustic side now here uh, of course the chlorine initiatives are really commendable and that's reflective in also in the the value added products that you're talking about but on the caustic prices the pressure is still fairly high right i mean how should we think about uh, you know any normalization there how significant is the supply overhang and is and this supply overhang if you can just clarify is this just global or is there a domestic issue as well i mean do we see too much over capacity in domestic market also so can you this is jayant let me take that question more from a domestic perspective and then we'll go to the international one from a domestic perspective i think the capacity utilization like in this course for all the manufacturers of caustic has been good you know from the lows of 40s of q1 or 50s of q1 i think largely every player has now come to around 80 80 or 80 to 100 so clearly there is a demand uptake in india side particularly i think the gap which was there in the textile sector in q1 has got covered up in q2 and also the paper demand has also ramped up substantially so i think from a capacity overhang while new capacities have come in india over the last one one and a half year but uh, at the rate at which the capacity utilization is growing for everybody and it sustains at 80 to 85% i think that is not going to be the overhang in the prices uh, stabilization in india i think india is predominantly impacted today on the east and the west coast of supplies coming from southeast asia northeast asia and middle east that is what and these are the largest markets of caustic consumption in east predominantly the alumina sun and west is predominantly when you have maharashtra and gujarat on some of the textile sun so currently the indian prices are subdued and are actually in line with the global price we look to look we expect that this will continue for some time however Uh, if the cost is, if the textile demand comes up in china like we were just talking about and some of the other parts when the cost of demand will go up over there you could see a uh, stabilization on the indian front also but i think it's a little too early to comment on that overall the cost of summary is demand is increasing it's got healthy in india there is pressure on the international prices both from north east asia south east asia and middle east now we have to wait and watch how demand picks up in some of these countries on the caustic mm-hmm. side to see the normalization okay got it i'll join back to you thank you so much thank you we have next question from the line of amit murarka from otilal oswal financial services please go ahead oh uh, yeah hi uh, good afternoon thanks for the opportunity uh, uh just a uh, uh, first question on the fertilizer uh, sale so uh, you say that the working capital adjustments uh, will be done uh, when the transaction is closing so let's say uh, there is a release of working capital either due to government receipts or uh, all that so does that mean that the cash receipt to you will be higher uh, than the 2600 odd crores that you have disclosed now sure so uh, no that's that's not correct so uh, suppose there is a uh release from government while the business is in power uh, and the working capital because as a result of that release comes down so because we've already got cash against that receivable from the government therefore the buyer will not pay that much cash so suppose you know hypothetically if uh, working capital is lower by say 50 crore okay because that has been paid by the government to us so therefore uh, the realization which uh, come down by 50 crore so we are we are we are going to be in that sense cash neutral uh, from the purchase consideration point of view 
So in what scenario will the purchase concentration then change uh, for the working capital? Uh, so if the working capital, if they don't pay us and the outstanding subsidy goes up by 50 crore, right? So if the government doesn't pay us and we show in the books that uh, working capital has gone up by 50%, 50 crore because of outstanding receivable, then the buyer will pay us that 50%, uh, 50 crore, sorry. And the purchase consideration goes up by 50. Yes. Oh, okay, understood. Uh, sure. And uh, so you expect it to close in eight to nine months, right? Uh, and uh, with this, like, uh, the entire fertilizer business is out, right? Even the trading business and the NPK fertilizers that you have. Absolutely. So we will be, uh, the existing fertilizer will, uh, business will entirely be sold to them. The brands, distribution, all the products that we have. <laughs> And we have customized fertilizer capacity of about 100. That will also go along with, uh, uh, it's all located in one place in Sure. Uh, and, and, and second question is on the Lubrizol, uh, maybe like, uh, so you say that it's a costless margin model. So uh, given that there is no capex involved from your end, so that margin will be a fixed production-based margin or will it be some annual uh, uh, agreed amount that they will pay you? It's a latter, it's an annual agreed amount. Oh, okay. And in, any sense about uh, like uh, the quantum that could come from there uh, then? No, I, I think we are, we are not disclosing the amount. Uh, you know, whenever it completes, it will be part of the uh, VAP, the VAP uh, chemicals, VAP uh, editor. And, and the working capital of running the business will be on you, right? So, so we, we, yeah, so that's true, but, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's a minor detail uh, in the transaction. Sure. Thank you. And also on the, on the, on the VSF uh, outlook that you're sharing, I mean, uh, seems like things have turned around very well now. So uh, uh, could you uh, like uh, uh, help us understand uh, where are we right now on let's say on a spot basis uh, on on the on the margin front uh, versus uh, like what, what is being disclosed in the two Q results? I guess it should have been improved substantially because the two Q there was only a gradual recovery which should have now stabilized. Yeah, we can. We don't need to like. I think we can give. Yeah. Trend and not really trend. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just to give you a broad trend, this is as you rightly said, the bulk of the Q2 was a demand recovery story. So the volumes went up. Toward the end of the quarter, from, from mid September to now, the, the Chinese prices, which used to be around 8,800 RMB, have gone to 10,700. They've gone up by 25%. So the full impact of this price recovery will come in subsequent quarter. That's the trend. So it happened toward the end of the quarter. And that has been holding up. It is broadly flattening around this level. It's about $1.4 a kg kind of thing in China. Okay. And, and but one, the one, one, the one caveat that is also is getting accompanied with the rising input price. The pulse prices have started going up. Not okay. as not by the same level, but some forming up is there. The motion rates are going up. So one has to, but overall there is a positive trend on Okay, thanks. I'll come back in the queue. Thank you, sir. We have next question from the line of Chirag Sureka from DSP Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. So, thank you. My questions are around the net debt. Uh, amazing job done on working capital, and they've really squeezed out uh, the cycle and generated cash flows. So, I just want to know is it more one off or sustainable? And in the second half, given the enhanced capex and uh, the fact that the working capital sector has already come down a lot, would you expect the net debt to increase somewhat? Uh, though the overall, I must say, the number still looks really strong. Thank you. Yes, sir. See, I think uh, you know it all depends on the EBITDA that you generate. So let me just uh, address the capex bit first before I uh, go to working capital. Um, so it depends on the EBITDA that you generate uh, in the second half, and if you are able to meet the capex requirement, uh, 
you know, substantially out of the EBITDA, then there is unlikely for, uh, you know, EBIT, uh, debt to go up. Um, so we will we will have to wait and see what, what happens to EBITDA. On the working capital front, you know, I, I think working capital, if there is readjustment in the cycle, okay, then obviously the new cycle takes over and therefore there will be no further, you know, uh, big uh, sums that you will be seeing from working capital coming in. So, uh, you know, I, I don't think uh, we should assume that this kind of a release of cash flow from working capital uh, will continue. This is, uh, uh, I, I, you know, it's, it's tough to say, but this is more likely to be uh, re uh, one off because of the readjustments of the cycle. Uh, when when things you know also due to COVID there is some uh, volatility right so uh, if we go back to earlier payment terms etc all those kind of things uh, that's also a possibility when things normalize so I, I you know it's very difficult to give guidance on working capital. Fair enough, sir. Thank you very much and happy Deepavali to you all. Thank you. We have next question from the lineup, Nirav Jimodia from Anvil Research. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, sir, I have two part questions. Sir, in the last uh, presentation, Q1 presentation, you have mentioned that our uh, VAP data has improved by 82% on a quarter on quarter basis. So if you can just uh, indicate the same or quantify the same for Q2, that would be helpful. So in the in case of uh, uh, VAP improvement, uh, we have mentioned in our presentation that the chlorine consumption in VAP increased to 30%. So it is Correct. up by up 3% uh, sequential. Correct. So yeah. So I think in quarter one, of course, there was a significant. Uh, improvement uh, because of the uh, you know quarter one was characterized with the in improve improvement in chlorine bath correct but sir you mentioned in your opening remarks that uh, the growth in uh, on a quarter on quarter basis for that EBITDA was in double digits so if you can just give some sense in terms of what what can be that figure? So like last quarter, you mentioned about 82%. So some sense in terms of what was the improvement from Q1 to Q2? So let, let me, let me try to get, take that question in a different way. Uh, yeah, sure. See, largely your first, Q, the Q1 EBITDA was largely given in the business by the batch. Correct. Because that is when the entire focus of the entire country was on hygiene sanitation. Correct. So you saw a significant ramp up on the chlorine VAP side. But now, if you look at Q2, it is a far more harmonized business because your caustic, which was a new EBITDA in Q1, is actually yeah. now substantially up. So while there is a delta of chlorine consumption, yeah. but your VAP EBITDA per se will not show an 82% jump because it had already reached a very high level in Q1. Okay. It has sequentially gone up by around 5 or 7% up, but and it's maintaining itself. So you're not going to get quarter on quarter ramp up of that jump because it's okay. come to a sustained level. And now the larger part of the EBITDA is coming from the caustic side. Okay. Then the, the double digit, when we are saying double digit increase on quarter on quarter basis, uh, this is actually more than 30% increase. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what they it won't jump to 80, it will be now yeah. like normal regular business. Yes, yes. Okay. okay. And so the second question is uh, in VSF, uh, on what parameters do we consider our products to be specialty? So, like, are there only one or two competitors only for that particular product, or the emphasis is more on the product innovation through our R&D? So what are the parameters do we generally consider when we consider our products to be specialty? There are, there are two or three parameters. One is the health and better realization. Okay. So when I say a specialty, each one of them has a much higher uh, uh, 
premium over pre-hard work. In fact, we, we categorize it based on the premium. You take modal. Okay. That has a premium of almost uh, 80 to one dollar over, over the normal spots. And okay. you're right. When such a good product and such a premium, they have to be less producers. So not everyone can make modal. So in the world, only three people can make modal. So okay. right, so out of the 25 or 26 players, only three can make modal. Okay. Same way it applies to Excel. So one is the price. Second is yes, the, the technology has to be very specific and very good. So I know how because it's important. So yeah, so modal, modal, Excel is very specialized. Some Excel specialty people, four or five people in the world can make it. Okay. So technology is a bit different data. So when I say I do X percent of charity, I have got a know-how which not everyone one can. Then comes even specialty or no specialty. But okay. we are now going to that level. Okay. So like non woven is a specialty, now we are developing non woven for specific applications like fire retardant. Now there okay. the premium doubles. So from okay. from from a half a dollar premium, we can go to the product we have made, premium can go four dollars. Like so, so there are now these niche products. They can't be large volume. So there is a, there are base products, innovation products, which are specialty, and on them there are niche products. Where premiums are very very high, but the consumption are not so so big. So fire retardant products, like uh, we have these antimicrobials. So those are the kind of products we're making. So I think our focus is to go more and more on the specialties and well products. Correct. And it's a related question to this is like, uh, if you can just also explain along with this that how has been our process innovation developed over a period of time? So if we consider, let's say, 2015 and 2020, so how the process innovation has really helped us in terms of reduction in per ton consumption of finished goods or power consumption per ton of finished goods? So if you can just explain something on that, that would be very helpful. So there are two. So there are two, there are innovation are two types, process and product. Right? Correct. Product innovations are for these VAPs. Okay. I told you, I'll briefly cover. The process ones are the most core viscose part. Now, the biggest innovation we have done, it has been a real value a creative. Not many in the world can do. Like caustic consumption is the second biggest cost for making viscose of pulp. Okay. And historically, the caustic consumption used to be, uh, I, 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 I'll give you an index, also 100. Yeah. Uh, that's the number. We have been able to bring it down significantly through a process innovation where we have gone to the basic chemistry. Why I am requiring so much chem uh, caustic? If you go by the sheer chemistry, you require much less caustic. But then there are physical considerations. So our innovations have built up what caustic does and like a value. We have unlocked a hell of a lot of caustic. Caustic consumption has been a major focus on what we call it a low caustic process. The development low caustic process. The 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 same the second has been pulp consumption. There has been a significant uh, improvement in the pulp consumption pattern of this course to again okay. better efficiency management, conversion efficiencies, and those kinds of things. Okay. Uh, so so then there are like an and number ones. We have optimized the various additives and chemicals which are required. Okay. So, I, so there is a lot of work which has happened, and uh, as a business, we have unlocked a lot of stuff in terms of uh, five years uh, on on, the, on this innovation. The second part of innovation is developing the value added product. Okay, and that is that is within the same kind of discourse. We have gone into micro discourse. Quality breaks so up, customer pays you, but value for that. We are doing something on what we call uh, uh, like like IPA, which is a control here, uh, a okay. version of more. So you you get better fibers, it can give you better quality in the product, and the consumer should pay more for you. So within the same product, we treat to give you better value creation. And third, creating products for new applications, which is okay. antimicrobial, which is environment. Platform Ziva Eco, the lowest greenhouse gas emissions per ton of product. So we are getting a huge uh, premium for that product. It was a zero uh, ton product about a year back. Today we are selling 100 tons per day of that product. The same viscose, 
made with more environment friendly uh, processes and inputs and you got a premium for that so that's how the whole has been so product innovation process innovation and environment sustainability innovation these are three legs for us are in the world okay thanks a lot for the opportunity sir and festival wishes to the entire team thank you thank you so much thank you we have next question from the line of abhinav bandari from nippon india asset management please go ahead yeah thanks for the uh, opportunity uh, i just had two uh, uh, short questions one is on the uh, lubrizol collaboration what is the timeline for this uh, 100 ktpa capacity to be uh, uh, starting commercial operation yeah so like, like i mentioned uh, it will come in two phases uh, and and that will complete by h2 of fy23 there is any specific on each phase uh, that uh, i think i think you're right ashish the phase 1 will come up by the second half of 23 and once the phase 1 stabilizes then the discussion for this way forward and through the phase 2 will start sure and uh, the phase 1 would be what half uh, uh, 50 ktp yeah 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 okay got it and second question was on the uh, fixed cost saving that we have uh, seen uh, specifically in the second quarter and as you highlighted uh, versus the uh, average quarterly run rate on the vsf side there is almost 100 uh, 116 odd crores and on the caustic side 50 plus odd crores so this is expected to continue in the second half also in the uh, second so see i think uh, you know fixed cost like i've maintained you have to see it from point of view of uh, two elements out there one is large would be employee and uh, there is uh, retirement interest and then there are uh, others as well like admin etc so uh, in the if we look at the two big categories employees so employees uh, is likely to uh, sustain uh, till till you you know reset and give uh, further increments etc but we've also taken action on the number of employees etc as well so there is likely to be uh, definitely the table has come down from previous levels and uh, so and that is that will def- uh, certainly sustain when it comes to repair maintenance so uh, you know that can also be divided into what is definitely required for the upkeep maintenance of the plant and then there is also uh, you know improvement in plants and uh, you know uh, spares etc that are uh, you know you postpone the decision where replacement is not so imperative okay those may come back so repair maintenance is something uh, that may come back uh, into the cost sure sure got it Uh, on the um, uh, capex side uh, the earlier uh, big expansion program that we had so you guided on the chemicals uh, um, uh, projects which would start now on the capex front on the um, other part i mean given that the vsf prices are also better now uh, uh, what 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 are the pointers or what are the catalyst uh, uh, you know post which will be uh, taking that decision vsf in the last quarter itself i think you know so amongst all the strategic projects capex projects that we had uh, planned uh, which were going ongoing till fy20 right uh, in we we had uh, paused all the projects in quarter 1 due to covid and in quarter 1 uh, quarter 1 uh, towards the end then we uh, uh, decided that all the projects will remain paused other than vsf so amongst the strategic projects that was what was cleared by the board okay so vsf project continues to be uh, you know being executed and will be executed by uh, quarter towards probably end of quarter 2 uh, in fy20 uh, basically next year got it got it fy20 sure. Sure. Let's pretty much. Thanks and uh, best wishes. Thank you, sir. We have next question from the line of Bhavin Chera from Inam Holdings. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, <clears throat> very good set of numbers and uh, good to see the non-core fertilizer being divested. Uh, 
so first question on this uh, fertilizer dividend if i understand correctly the subsidy receivable from uh, government would be uh, close to 1100 1200 crores which is the part of that uh, working capital adjustment as on june 30 Yes, so for June numbers, we don't uh, uh, guide, give guidance of working capital breakup, etc. Right. So, but uh, you know, if you look at the subsidy numbers uh, to give you some guidance, uh, overall for the year, the average outstanding is somewhere around 1200 uh, crore for the year. So it it actually depends on when the closing happens, right? For to know so uh, where where would it land okay so mm-hmm. uh, and and the, the the way the trend of subsidy is always that typically march and june quarter okay is the peak and september and december quarter uh, they are at their lo- lowest okay so that trend we've always seen Uh, uh march and june quarter to be the highs and september and december quarters to be the lows so june quarter by that logic would be on a higher side and september and december quarter would be on a lower side uh, uh right no, just to understand sir uh, uh ev on this deal subs- uh, subsidies as good as uh, cash if you stop doing the business so that number has to be received some day maybe over 12 to 15 months so if i net off that number uh, roughly we are getting uh, 13 1400 crores on divesting the fertilizer business is that understanding correct it's a business sale so i think we should look at it from the point of view of what number has been ascribed for the business which includes the working capital uh, uh, so that's how uh, we would uh, look at this number okay uh my next question uh, is on the uh, vsf uh, business uh, just to uh, get clarity on this uh, speciality if my understanding of the capacity is correct out of this uh, 5 lakh 87000 uh, roughly uh, currently 26 27% is the uh, speciality including the kharch line and including the modal capacity yeah that's the roughly a number but we can go up to You see, these are flexible lines in some for some specialties. Okay. So I can I so we have made multi-purpose lines which can do not in all cases in some cases which can do a specialty and a commodity product also. So the best case I can go is about thirty-five percent. Best case on current capacity would be thirty-five, and uh, yeah. uh, what would be on the expanded number which uh, should be ready by next year? Uh, any incremental expansion is also yeah, happening. Because, the, because, yeah, yeah, the expand the expansion also has a flexibility to make make some specialties. So we will we'll maintain the ratio. Uh, maintain the ratio. So, but you know the good the good thing is, see, let let me tell you, specialty one is a product specialty, one is a packaging specialty. Sometimes. What you call a commodity may be a, a special different gives you good price. So we have to look at that way how you do your planning. So we design lines in such a way that they can do both in in some cases. So actually, you think yeah, thirty percent odd would be the number uh, yeah, in yeah, terms of should, flexibility. Yeah, should, should, should sustain yeah. And as of now, you are doing fifteen percent. So we have a long way to grow. Uh, grow in the website. That 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 again. Look, last quarter was much higher. See so what happened in this quarter? The demand surge has been so high for the grey fiber mm-hmm. in India, which is a very very high value. Uh, that's what I'm telling you. The the it is far more attractive for me to sell in India than export a, a specialty to China. So a lot of a lot of my capacity on exports has been diverted to the grey. That's why it is not that I don't have market. Right. Now, our, we are committed as Gafin to supply and feed the local market 100 percent. Okay. That's our commitment to this country. So right. we are deliberately cutting on some of those specialties and exports to feed the local market till my new capacity comes on stream. And had there been no COVID, my new capacity would have been on stream by now, and I would have been home. Uh, right and uh, if i see your uh, capex uh, chart and the capacity uh, chart which is coming in uh, your majority of the expansions are uh, getting over by next year uh, uh, quarter 2 right uh, yeah 
because you are saying FY22 and beyond also. But if I see the completion dates, uh, most of the completion dates is around uh, uh, quarter to FY22. Uh, uh, you, yeah. you will be a 1.5 chlorine and 0.8. So, is there a, anything uh, previous projects would be pending beyond that date? Yeah, so I think uh, the, you know, uh, BB Puram phase two, okay, that uh, will be pending. So, Bal Puram phase two. How much is that of capacity? Um, That's again, you know, 50% is coming now, 50% later. Yeah, so equally divided. Okay. And uh, my last one, sir, on the modal premium which you gave, you said uh, roughly around 0. 0.8 to uh, $1. Yeah, that's, that's the indicative number. Don't hold me for it. Yeah. No, no. That just keeps, I'm that, saying, that, that I, keeps changing, that keeps changing with the market. Yeah, yeah. It keeps changing. But just to uh, get, if my understanding is correct, the entire specialty portfolio normally gets between 0. 0.8 mm-hmm. or 0. 0.7. No, no, no. And no, 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 is over no, and above no. that? No, no, no. Listen, we have a gray. The premium we always talk about is over gray. Over gray only, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Modal has a different premium. Lyocell has a different premium. Levi equals a different premium. Uh, mm-hmm. Dope Dad has a different premium. So, it varies depending on what are the. See, nothing comes free in life. So, the delta comes at a cost also. Huh? Right, right. So, so, yeah. So, so, the premium depends upon the, the cost as well. But these are mm-hmm. the, high, the highest premium products in my portfolio are Lyocell and Modal. Okay. Okay. And the and the niche specialty they are selling you. And that you are saying it's roughly around a dollar over grain. That 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 will depend. Well, they they can vary much more also. But they are very very small quantity. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. We have next question from the line of Naveen Sahadio from Edelweiss Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the uh, opportunity and uh, nice to see a good uh, uh, recovery in the quarterly performance. Just one question, uh, only on your CAPEX. Uh, Q4 presentation had mentioned the total CAPEX outlay, uh, you know, uh, uh, beyond 20, I mean, uh, beyond the 520, the total CAPEX plan was a little under 5,000 odd crore rupees. And of course, there were uh, some revisions uh, for FY21. I think the latest number, uh, if I see it correctly, it's around 1800 or 1800-1850 crore is what we plan to spend in FY21. Now, given uh, the the uh, capex for FY, I mean, you know, uh, capex timeline for v, uh, VSS is around Q2 for the bulk of the capacity to get commissioned, what kind of amount uh, should uh, uh, the pencil loan, or would you guide as total capex outflow in FY22? Uh, sorry, FY22, you're saying? Yeah, 21, you've already said it's 1850. Yeah. So no. I'm just uh, referring to your Q4 FY20 yeah, presentation and the total capex was 5000 crore. Yeah, so I, I understand the question. I think, see, this, this uh, number of uh, uh, 5000 crore that you, uh, is there in a Q4, I think. Okay, the that's the that's we always look at from the point of view of what has been sh- sanctioned by the board over a period of time and what is outstanding sanction that is there from the board, right? And from that outstanding sanction, what what we give in the right side of the table is what has been spent and what is expected to be spent. And therefore, from the sanction, whatever is the balance amount is always for beyond that year so so suppose in your uh, you know examples out of 5000 that is yet balance sanction that is there if i'm talking about 1850 to be spent this year then the balance will be spent over next uh, two years roughly okay uh, however you know uh, we may decide that out of that sanctioned amount uh, you know some of the spend will not happen at all, okay? So therefore, uh, you know, that's why, I, you know, this time, last two quarters, we've, we've stuck to uh, what we believe will be the spend for this year, rather than uh, trying to uh, give you figures for uh, 22 and 23 as well. Um, and as, you know, and, and because of this whole situation of COVID, we had decided that any which ways we would look at the CapEx plans 
very closely and keep reviewing it. So, you know, once there is more clarity, if we can provide uh, 22 and 23 uh, or whatever, 22 onwards, we will uh, try and give, give that and provide that. Uh, as of now, I think uh, it's, we would like to stick with the guidance that we have given for FY21. Sure, no, because it just uh, out of the total 5,000 or uh, crore capex, a significant amount was towards modernization and uh, 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 maintenance. So given this test situation, I think that kind of capex can wait. Is that yeah, yeah. directional intent I wanted to okay. get a point? Yeah, absolutely. That can wait. That could be dropped. Uh, both can happen. Okay. Uh, so yes, so that that is what the plan would be. But I think the the point is to focus uh, focus on the strategic capex, right? The capacity enhancing capex. Those capacity enhancing capex we have given a full clarity on, uh, you know, and the balance modernization capex, etc. Can on an, you know. Uh, is something that is more under our control, so we will we will decide uh, accordingly. Sure, sure. And just one uh, uh, question. I'm sorry to repeat, but how much were uh, in in VSF volumes or either in value? Uh, uh, how much were exports contribution in this quarter? Yeah, so exports from the previous quarter, as you have noticed, has uh, come down. So in viscose, it's eighteen percent of sales that is uh, in volume terms, 18% uh, of sales in the volume terms that is there for, uh, you know, for in exports now. For in the current quarter, in Q2, right? Yeah, in Q2, yeah. And, and that's like a steady, uh, that's like a normalized uh, stable number or how should we look at it from a, a coming and shooting quarter's point of view? Yeah, so quarter, you know, quarter one, uh, like I said that we, in quarter one, uh, uh, commentary that because the dockets were closed, so therefore we resorted to the export uh, market, and that went as high as uh, 38, uh, 35, 38 percent, if I recall. And uh, this quarter, it has come back to the more normal levels of uh, what we ex should expect uh, going forward. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. We have next question from the line of Sagar Parikh from One Up Finance. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, good afternoon, sir, and thank you for taking my question. My question most of my questions are answered. I just wanted to uh, ask you one more thing. Uh, so basically, by the end of FY22, uh, most of bulk of our capex uh, would be over, and you know, you would be showing two months of free cash uh, by FY23 onwards. So. Any kind of thoughts on, uh, you know, capital allocation in terms of uh, how uh, uh, will we be spending the free cash? So, I, you know, uh, tough to say at this stage. I don't think we have any, uh, apart from the uh, current CapEx program, uh, we really don't have uh, large CapEx other than modernization, etc. that will continue. Uh, but but we keep evaluating various projects, various partnerships uh, uh, to invest, uh, you know, capital in which is giving uh, likely to give us good ROC. Uh, apart from that, uh, uh, you know, uh, if you're referring to uh, dividends slash buybacks, that will continue to be as per the policy. Uh, we'll have to take into account the profitability, any capex requirement or fund requirement that may be there before we decide and uh, to step that up. Okay, sure. And uh, last question from my side: uh, How much was the volumes of non-woven this quarter? Because I believe that non-woven uh, demand would be pretty good uh, with uh, you know uh, you know which goes into masks and uh, covers etc. So. Uh, or the 15% of that contribution in the FS, uh, how much would be non -moving? And we don't give, sorry, you had another question, why don't you finish? No, no, on an annual basis, uh, can we expect like 10 15 percent of our volume to come from non moving segments? So we, it, specific numbers will be uh, tough for us to give. I think 15% is uh, WAP, which includes uh, non-woven. Um, uh, 
delete you want to yeah. add any no 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 i think you uh, see understand this uh, non woven is one of the uh, the, the specialties we have and there are uh, the the non right now we were running short on the gray fiber capacity that's why the non woven volumes came down going forward as i told you we have flexibility to make non woven as required and and non woven in india is not a large demand it's a, it's a global demand so you can service that from wherever you want so i think the indian market we are fully feeding from the local production it is only the export part of the non woven which we are not we, they will, will be selecting depending upon the supply demand situation because right now we are short on capacity right so the premium non woven will be lower right uh, much lower no no non woven is not that premium it, it went a little high because of covid but now it is back to a very nominal premium so that's why i differentiate there is a vap and there is a specialty okay. non woven is a is not a is a specialty but it's not a real vap in that respect okay. And on the pulp prices, uh, uh, it's all gone up in tandem with VFS. So VFS is about fifteen, sixteen, fifteen, seventy dollars. So pulp prices will be about what about ten to fifteen dollars, or ten to fifteen percent higher than six hundred dollars. Or uh, how much will be the pulp price right now? Pulp prices have gone up by about yeah, around ten percent is what you can say. Sorry, twenty ten percent. Yeah. Yeah. So just two. Okay, Sakit, is that right? Sakit is that right? Less than that, actually. Yeah. Less than that. Yeah. Less than that. No, so less than two points. I would like to just clarify out here. One is the pulp price that we are saying is a spot price, whereas we continue to get the advantage because of the, uh, you know, ninety uh, day uh, yeah. period that I talk about, right? Ninety or less than ninety days, whatever. Right. And second point, I want to clarify that in the chart, what we give from uh, VAP, okay, that includes both VAP and specialty, 15%. So it's basically other than gray. Yeah, that ends. Yeah. 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 So just to just to explain to you, in the pulp case, last year in the falling market, I see it depends. In a, in a in a in a rising market, it hurts you. In a falling market, it helps you. So it okay. depends how. Yeah. I found this on the web. So it's fine. Me, 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 me. The rising market helps you. Check it out. Yeah, that's right. Right. So our, in the rising market helps you absolutely right. So that's why we are saying so. Even if so spot prices may go up, but right. our consumption price does not go up. Right. So how much would be procuring on a long term basis then? About more than fifty, sixty percent. All, all. Oh. All. Oh. Oh. So then, our uh, premium effect of our KG on VFS would be on even on grey would be right now about more than thirty, thirty-five rupees per kilo. I don't think we can comment a number on that. Yeah, we can't comment on that number. But sorry, long term. So we have long term contracts, and anyways, uh, uh, part of our procurement is from our JVs uh, itself. So just wanted to clarify. Uh, so volume contracts are there. The price is determined on the basis of uh, uh, spot plus certain uh, formula that is there. Okay, fair enough. Uh, great sir all the best that is from my side and wish the entire team was very happy to watch thank you thank you sir we have next question from the line of pratik kumar from antic stock broking please go ahead sir uh, i have two short questions so firstly on uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, increase in domestic mix uh, during this quarter in bss is any reflection of uh, Are constant focus on domestic demand and not because of fall in export demand, right? No, no. The the, the domestic demand has picked up significantly, but but export demand. See, export is a large market, so it can be serviced by various people. But domestic is our core market, so we are working on this market to grow the demand, and demand has grown significantly. Yet. Just to tell you, the the domestic market has grown at about in last few years. At, 14 to 15 percent CAGR compared to global of 5 to 7 percent. Uh, and has that uh, uh, domestic demand recovery, which will probably be the best in September versus the whole quarter, has that accelerated further? No, no. It it has been month on month going steadily. If you look at right, so would that have accelerated further into October number, right? And now it is coming to a full. It will come to pre-COVID levels now. So now I think it will plateau. 
uh, and demand has recovered to the old, old, uh, old levels. Uh, okay. And uh, your uh, cost optimization, uh, you suggested that uh, there is this large contribution of repairs and maintenance. Uh, out of this 120 plus 50, 170 crore, so maybe 50 percent would be repairs and maintenance, uh, something which we delayed to next quarter. No, I think there is a little. Uh, uh, there are two types of repairs and maintenance: so routine repairs and replacement repairs, specified repairs. The routine repairs have not been delayed. Anything which will hurt the plant health or the safety and environment is not from uh, deferred at all. So that has been uh, uh, spent. The, it is the, the replacement uh, uh, expenditure which depends upon the life of the equipment. That every five year I want to change, every six year I want to change. Here we do a condition based monitoring. And if the equipment is in a good condition, we can defer by a couple of quarters. So it is, it is that part. So it, that makes about 30 to 40 percent of the total RM budget where we can take a discretionary view. Absolutely, and, and, and you know, uh, I think nowhere near 50%, it will be yeah. uh, lower than that out of the total fixed cost, uh, uh, you know, so it, maybe about, you know, uh, 25. 20, yeah, that's right, that's the kind of number, yeah. Yeah, yeah would be the number, so. So that could come back, remaining could remain with the yeah. company in terms of yeah. Yeah. savings. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 And, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, I want to reiterate the point that, uh, you know, there are initiatives, cost initiatives that are have been taken by the company across both fixed cost and variable cost, okay? And therefore, consumption norms, etc. you know, like Dilip talked about caustic use, the pulp use and all those things. So a lot of these cost savings will be uh, sustainable uh, both on the fixed as well as the uh, variable side. Oh, repair maintenance is probably the only one where, of course, to make sure that the plant is kept uh, maintained, that cost may go up. Go up meaning go back to what it used to be. Okay. And chlorine evacuation uh, from that Lubrizol project is expected to have like more captive integration. So what is the current uh, captive integration? And uh, and uh, we are talking about this 5% increase on expanded capacity, which we are also adding like in chemicals. Yeah, yeah. this 5% increase on the expanded capacity. Our current, I think in the presentation, we're saying that we've got about a 30% captive. That's so, right. Yeah, so this will be on the expanded capacity. Yeah, so 5% uh, will be on the total 100 kg. Uh, and uh, of this fertilizer sale, is there a tax impact on our earnings? Uh, I mean, uh, would we have a tax impact on cash flows out of this 26.80 crores which we, which we get? No, absolutely. I think uh, if we make money, we have to obviously pay taxes. So it's, an, it's a slump sale of undertaking. So based on income tax provisions, et cetera, we will be paying uh, taxes on this uh, unless we can partly be able to set it off against any long-term laws, et cetera. So it'll all be calculated on the basis of uh, taxation and then uh, we'll arrive at the amount at closing because it will be closing will be in FI22, so it will depend on what we have as carry forward losses, et cetera. In the capital gains category, if any, we may not have also. So I think all those calculations will go into determining what the tax would be. And last question on your... Sir, I'm sorry to interrupt. Please come back in a question. Thank you. Thank you. We have next question from the line of Gaurav Pratedia from Morgan Stanley. Please go ahead. Okay, congratulations on a great execution and thanks for taking my question. So firstly, a uh, question related on capital allocation topic. Uh, uh, Ashish, just want to understand uh, what would be an ideal capital structure you would like to have in the medium term. And this is in context of the divestment of the fertilizer business, which will make us almost uh, net debt free. Uh, so what should be the ideal capital structure? Would there be a thought of uh, returning excess cash to the shareholders? So, see, I think uh, if you go back to history and uh, look at FY19 end, okay, and before that, FY19 end and before that, uh, Grassim used to be 
uh, net debt uh, zero to, in fact, uh, net cash uh, company. Uh, with this, uh, you know, before we decide to uh, invest in any project or anything of that sort, leaving that aside, right now the plan is for it to see if we can find high ROC opportunities within the core business. But uh, assuming that, uh, you know, uh, we, that takes time, it will obviously go and reduce your net debt. And uh, then in that case, we will be back to net debt uh, zero situation. So I think, uh, uh, you know, uh, Grasim has a very strong balance sheet. It's AAA, it has always enjoyed that. Uh, it lends the, uh, its, its strength to its subsidiaries as well, due to which they are also AAA. So therefore, I think we would like to continue with that situation. Uh, and uh, if we are taking, uh, we will never use, or ca cannot say never, but we will not use equity uh, infusion into, we will never require equity infusion to fund any of the projects. So therefore, uh, you know, uh, if we need to raise debt uh, to fund any project in the future, uh, we will always follow a very conservative approach of how much debt you take up. And that is reflected from our actions in the last two years where the debt has always been in a controlled uh, way. And, you know, I want to also take the opportunity to, you know, make the point extremely clear that this sale has nothing to do with the debt that we have on uh, Grasim. I think the debt is at a very, very comfortable level in comparison to the EBITDA and comparison to the overall consolidated investments, etc. that we have. So we are not at all concerned about that. And this has been done totally uh, as a strategic uh, uh, call on the portfolio. And that's the reason behind it, doing that. Uh, great, Ashish. Uh, just to, uh, if you could uh, reiterate uh, your priorities uh, with respect to allocation of capital to group companies, uh, that will always take a second or third approach before yeah. you uh, look at the organic capex, right? Uh, absolutely. That continues uh, that uh, organic capex, which we have planned for the next two, three years, will uh, always take precedence. Uh, you know, second would be if, uh, you know, in, in financial services, uh, it always requires equity infusion. If you don't want to get diluted there because you want to maintain consolidation status, we, we may decide uh, at right price levels to put uh, money there. Right now, there is absolutely no requirement out there, and there is no intent to put money in other group companies. And Great, Ashish. Sorry, just yeah. a, a couple of... To be technically right, we are building for uh, solar business as a subsidiary, so there is fund requirement there. We put our equity portion. And, of course, the uh, uh, ongoing calls that may come on ABFRL rights issue that they have already done to pay for first <laughs> round, a couple of more calls uh, that may come, uh, we'll, we'll put that uh, committed money out there. Great. Uh, last question from me. On the chlorine uh, VAP, uh, do you have any target in mind of what percentage uh, you want to take it up to uh, over the next two years on your expanded capacity? Any such uh, similar deals uh, in the works right now? Do you like this is right now 30%? Do you think this can potentially go up to 40, 50% over the next two years? Thank you. Kalyan Dilip, uh, would you like to comment? Sorry, Kalyan or Jant, my apologies. I think, uh, you know, we continuously keep exploring uh, the options on collaboration that will come up. Uh, uh, there is uh, the CapEx uh, plan. Uh, clearly, there are some derivatives which have been uh, given over there, particularly, uh, you know, at the Belayat side. So, overall, I I think we will be gradually inching up. I don't expect it to reach 40-50% in the next two years. But uh, clearly, I think in the next two odd years, we will inch it up by a couple of, you know, maybe 400 or 500 
the basis point of say 34, 35 percent. Just to Thank add, um, uh, just to add the long term, long term plan remains. We don't want. Um, uh, chlorine to be uh, sold as chlorine uh, in the long run over the next many years, so over the five to ten year time frame. So all that we are doing is, as I said earlier, um, either we invest in uh, value-added products or we uh, have um, customers close by next to us and creating pipeline supplies, or we will have alliances like we announced on Rubizol. And our interest is to by in the next five years to get closer to 40, 50%, and thereafter uh, much closer to 70, 80% in the coming, uh, you know, the thereafter beyond 2025. So that is the strategy. We'll be working on several projects. We've had several projects that are being discussed. So uh, we'll continue to pursue that strategy. Thank you, that's very helpful. Thank you. We have next question from the line of Sanjay Parikh from Nippon India Asset Management. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, uh, you know, great uh, comeback. Uh, really congratulate the team, both Chemical and BSF. Uh, also, very clearly, uh, you know, uh, spelling out that, uh, you know, will not invest into uh, investments into uh, uh, idea and the priority would be more core businesses and its expansion. Uh, only my question is, uh, and that's a suggestion also to Ashish and the board, that you know, once we see the cash flow right now today, that is 2300 crore, we get 2600 crore in nine months, we would have accruals and then we have capex. So by and large, you know, next year, end of next year, I don't think we would end with more than 1000 crore of debt. Uh, now today, uh, you know, if you see last two and a half years, uh, the returns on our stock has not been great. Um, uh, the, today, just if you take a reasonable EBITDA assumption for a core business next year, on the today's prices of the list. I'm sorry, sir, we lost the line of Mr. Parikh. Why don't we take the next question and then have him come back and ask the question? Sure, sir. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Saket Kapoor from Kapoor Company. Please go ahead. Yes, yeah, sir. Thank you for for the opportunity, sir. Uh, although there uh, there has been an uptick in the utilization levels, I'm talking about the uh, the chloroacrylic uh, segment, sir. But the prices have, uh, the EU realizations have re remained de uh, depressed, sir. So, sir, uh, what are the uh, what are the fa factors that are uh, creating hindrance in any uptake in, uh, in in the prices, sir? And uh, what is the up any uh, ADD has been imposed from any any of the nations? Sir? What is the update on that? Sir? So, I think we we took that question a little earlier, but I'll just repeat. I'm very sorry, sir. Okay. Yes, please, sir. Uh, sir. That, uh, there is a globally, this is not an Indian phenomenon of the prices of caustic uh, being uh, depressed at this moment. It's kind of a global phenomenon running across all over the place. The more impacted is the Northeast Asia and South Asia, particularly Northeast Asia because it's a high denial demand, which makes the touring prices attractive, and that being a primary product over there. So there is a large excessive caustic capacity which is flowing out of that place. And... Uh, uh, similarly, there you have Middle East also, which is impacting in the West Coast. So it's a global phenomenon. There is global oversupply at the moment. It will, and I think it's fair enough to say that we expect the situation to continue for some time over there. In terms of the echo, I think if you look at from our echo perspective, there are a couple of things which have gone positive. One is uh, the chlorine, which was earlier negative, is now been trending for the last six months in the positive territory. The second is being the cost savings, particularly for us, power is a very critical part. Uh, that is help us maintain uh, an echo which we currently have. Uh, going forward in terms of ADD, your last point was, there was just a sunset review which happened in Korea and China, which was reported uh, there. It has 
I think now in the final stages of going from the BGTR office to the finance ministry, we're waiting for the final outcome. But that verdict has gone back and extension has been given by the BGTR. And then there is work in progress for data simulation happening all over the place to see what it's, uh, you know, we're discussing in Government of India or a couple of other places, but, you know, that we won't talk about till we reach a stage of the decision. I hope that, that, that takes care of your three parts of the question. Hello. Yes. Sir, uh, I'm audible now. Hello. Hello. Yeah, 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 we can hear you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, I missed the last part of the DGTR. What you, you were explaining that uh, uh, it is. I mean, the the four months have been the impos uh, imposition for a provisional duty yes, has been done. The review on Korea and China by the DGTR has gone has been accepted. Now the papers move to Finance Ministry for ultimate approval. I think that's the mm -hmm. government process which has been got. From BGTR perspective, it has been approved, but the, the ADD on China and Korea will continue. The other is work in progress, and as we, we move forward, we will discuss it later. Thank you. We take the last question from the line of Sanjay Parik from Nippon India Asset Management. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, sorry, I got disconnected. So the point I was making is that, uh, you know, uh, we've got to have reasonable uh, I mean, the debt is not going to spike up if we take 12 months from now. And uh, if we take a reasonably stable market next year, uh, you know, we look at a very good, handsome EBITDA. Um, so if you take the today's listed value, we are broadly at 65 to 70% discount. Now, in this scenario, now, uh, you know, uh, when the cost of borrowing is so low, uh, would you consider even at the cost of borrowing to do buyback and align the misalignment in such a large holding company discount? That's a suggestion I have. No, sure. I think uh, uh, we have noted uh, your uh, suggestion. Uh, in, like I said earlier, that it will depend on uh, various factors on the basis of which board can decide. But uh, certainly we have uh, noted your suggestion on this one. Yeah, fine. I congratulate you for really selling off the fertilizer unit and giving a very clear stance on capital allocation. That will really help long-term investors. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question. I'd now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Ashish Adukia, CFO, for closing comments. Over to you, sir. No, thanks, thanks everyone for joining. And uh, we, we generally have the call immediately after results. Uh, as you know, you know, we had many things to do yesterday, so we thought that instead of uh, eating up into your evening, we do a call uh, today. So thanks for joining and wish you guys uh, a great festive season ahead of us and happy Diwali. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Krasim Industries Limited, that concludes this conference call. Thank you for joining with us and you may now disconnect your lines.